Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Vance and I'm the Regional Advocacy Manager here in Dallas. Today, I'm gonna to be talking with you regarding the upcoming election. At KIPP, we want everyone that's eligible to vote. So we're sharing information to help make this a smooth and efficient process of getting in and out and voting for everyone. This workshop is going to be provided in both English and Spanish subtitled. So let's get started. On today's agenda, we're going to be focusing on three big topics, vote early, vote safe, and vote smart. Specifically, I'm going to share information on knowing the dates and making a plan, what you should bring, what you should not bring, as well as information on poll watching, what that is, voter intimidation, what that looks like, election information resources, and a voter checklist at the end. So let's dive in. We want you to vote early. Election day is Tuesday, November 3rd, but that is not the only day to vote. Early voting is going on right now. We are in the last week of early voting and it goes through the 30th, October 30th. We encourage everyone to vote early. This is a great opportunity for you to go vote and be in and out in a short amount of time. My best friend voted recently and was done in eight minutes. Election day is likely going to be very long lines and gonna be crazy. So please take advantage of early voting. While the deadline may have already passed to request a ballot by mail, you still have a short window of time to return your completed ballot. The ballot must be postmarked by November 3rd and received by November 4th. We strongly encourage you, if you have received your ballot by mail, fill it out, sign it, follow the instructions, and get that back in the mail as soon as possible. Lastly, we wanna ensure you know your county polling location and hours. Each county is different, so you must know your county's information. Some counties have voting centers, which allow you to vote anywhere in the county. This is a great convenience, but you need to look up the hours. Usually this can be found on your county elections website. Next is what to bring. Now this falls under the category of vote safe. First, you need to bring identification right out of the gate. There are seven photo IDs that are acceptable in Texas. I'm gonna talk about them on the next slide. Next, we want you to be prepared should any serious issues arise. One way is to have phone numbers ready for voting. Now, remember, at the end of the day, we're dealing with human beings. And sometimes mistakes may occur. And it doesn't always require you to go straight to making a phone call first. Sometimes you just got to talk to the folks. Recently, when I voted, the workers were unable to find me in the electronic poll book. I waited calmly and worked with the election workers, the clerk, trying to locate my file. Ultimately, they were able to locate my file, but it did take four people for that to happen. And so I was able to vote. I didn't have to call anyone. I just was patient and worked with the clerks and the election judge and was able to get that accomplished. Next, bring your mask and abide by local health authorities guidance. You can't control what others do, but during this global pandemic, you can protect yourself. Bring your mask, wear your mask. If needed, you can bring a sample ballot or voter guide. We'll talk a little bit more in depth about that on another slide, but you can bring these with you and you can mark it up as you need. Lastly, you can bring children with you. Kids are always welcome to join you while you're voting. As I mentioned earlier, 
there are seven acceptable forms of ID to vote in the state of Texas, and you'll need at least one. That includes your Texas driver's license, a Texas personal ID card, a Texas election ID certificate, a Texas handgun license, US passport book or card, a US citizenship certificate with photo, and a US military ID. Any of those seven are acceptable. And if you don't have a photo ID or any of these items, there are secondary documents that you can bring, which are listed on the votetexas.gov website. You will have to fill out a reasonable impediment form, but you will be able to vote. So what not to bring? Still operating under the vote safe category, number one, right out of the gate, do not bring any weapons, any guns, firearms. That is unnecessary. Texas law prohibits weapons on the premises of a polling place during early vote or on election day. The law is clear about what are premises and parking lots are not part of the premises. We still want you to be safe, so don't bring any weapons. Next, you cannot wear political signs, buttons, or clothing. No pro or anti-candidate or political party clothing. Here, we have two examples. One is acceptable and one is unacceptable. Encouraging others to vote is very acceptable, but a shirt with a candidate name or slogan would not be allowed. If you have to leave line to change your attire or get something, you can lose your place in line. So be aware and think before you leave. Poll watching. We have heard a lot about it. The president has called for an army of volunteers to be poll watchers. So what is it? Poll watching is basically having observers of an election to ensure things go smoothly and legally. They may watch the process, but they can't watch your vote, except for one scenario, which I'll cover in a moment. Texas has specific processes for poll watchers to be approved and work at a poll location. Poll watchers must be appointed by a political party or candidate or by those supporting or against a ballot measure. These are the only folks who can be approved as poll watchers. They must apply and be appointed by someone or some entity that's connected to something on the ballot. Individuals cannot just show up and declare they are poll watchers. Approved poll watchers will have badges to identify themselves. Secondly, poll watchers are not allowed to speak to voters. They can't ask you for your ID. They can't ask you if you're eligible. They can't do any of that. They are there to observe. <clears throat> Excuse me. If they see something wrong, their job is to bring it to the election clerk or judge, but they can't engage with voters. Now earlier, I mentioned one exception where a poll watcher may observe your vote. If a voter needs help to vote, they may ask a person of their choosing for assistance, or they may ask an election worker to help vote. If they ask an election worker to help them, a poll watcher can observe that interaction. If you think about it, it's to ensure that the worker is pressing the votes that the voter actually wants. Voter intimidation. It is illegal to intimidate voters in the United States. There is a very broad definition of what is considered voter intimidation. Listed here are a few items ranging from aggressively asking a voter about their citizenship status to actual threats against voters for how they vote. Also, falsely presenting oneself as an election official to intervene with, to interfere with others voting. 
that's some, someone pretending to be an election judge or an election clerk. Next up is vote smart. How do you vote smart? Well, knowing what is on the ballot, knowing who you wanna vote for, knowing what issues and proposals are on the ballot and how you feel about it. You really shouldn't ask election workers how to vote or what they think. And if they're doing their job, they won't tell you. You can ask people in line, but the best way for you to do this is to look up the information beforehand yourself and then vote. Make the choices that you feel are best for you. So you can get your sample ballot from your county elections office, particularly if this is offered online. Here in Dallas County, you can enter your name and date of birth on the county website and get your specific sample ballot which you can take with you when you go to the polls. The League of Women Voters has a wonderful voter guide that is nonpartisan. It shares information on all candidates based on what the candidates submit to them. Lastly, you need to know your voter registration status before you go to the poll. You can check your registration status by going to www.votetexas.gov or going to your local county election website. Hopefully it is active. That way, if you get to the poll and there are any issues, you can say, I already checked my status and I'm in there. So now let's wrap this all up with a checklist. First, verify your voter registration is active. If it is not you may have to do a provisional ballot, which could lead to a delay in your vote being counted. Next, know the polling locations and hours. Again, this is important. We don't want you to show up in the wrong county or go to a site and discover it only covers a different county. And we definitely want the location to be open when you get there. Be aware of your attire. Remember, don't go wearing a candidate-specific or a political party-specific shirt. This includes slogans that are specific to a candidate. Have phone numbers if issues arise. Also, remember to be patient with the people that are working. Sometimes it just requires talking through with them. Maybe they put an extra space or they misspell something. Next, bring your photo ID. We listed the seven acceptable IDs. Should you not have one, you may have to fill out a provisional ballot. And again, that could delay your vote being counted. Know who you're voting for. As we said earlier, you can bring a voter guide, you can mark it up, scratch through, highlight, etc. You cannot use it to convince someone else how to vote while you're in line but you can use it once you get inside. Lastly, vote, vote, vote. Go out and make your voice heard. Early vote if you can and be safe. With that, on behalf of myself and the advocacy team, as well as the KIPP Texas family, I thank you for your patience. I know this is a lot of information, we hope to see you on the other side. Have a great day.